huh, okay, so what is going on here? It's like a lot of joined up pictures of some guy. It's, oh, these are David Hockney's joiners, which are basically photo collages. David Hockney is a British artist who was born in 1937. He's explored a ton of different art techniques, mostly drawing, painting. He's very famous for his photo collages, which we're going to see a little bit later. But he's also experimented with doing stage design. Recently, he's been doing a lot of paintings on iPads. He makes a lot of videos. He's really old. Glasses game, but very strong. I become very, very aware of this frozen moment that was very unreal to me. The photographs didn't really have life in the way a drawing or painting did. And I realized it couldn't because of what it is. Compared to Rembrandt looking at himself for hours and hours and scrutinizing his face and putting all these hours into the picture that you're going to look at, naturally there's many more hours there than even you can give it. A photograph is the other way around. It's a fraction of a second, frozen. So the moment you've looked at it for even four seconds, you're looking at it for far more than the camera did. Okay, so like here's one of his most famous ones, Pear Blossom Highway from 1986. I have no idea how many photos are in this. It's like a thousand or something. There's about 800, I think, on, on it. All right, joiners are a term that Cockney made up. It's basically all different photos that were taken around the same time of the same thing, but put together to create one big image altogether. So one benefit to making joiners is that you can see multiple perspectives of one scene at the same time. When you're taking a picture of something normally, you're from one vantage point. But with joiners, you can see from the top, the side, the bottom. So here's a countertop from one perspective. You see everything just once. But in this joiner photograph, it's made up of a number of different images, all taken from different perspectives. You're able to see the different parts of the objects in the picture. You can see the sides of the bottle, you can see the label, you can see the top, you can see all different parts of the butter dish. The way that we view things in real life is actually more like that than the way that a single image is. We are constantly moving our eyes. Since we have two eyes, we're able to see so many different things at once. And it's actually more closely related to reality when you're seeing multiple perspectives of something rather than just one side of an object. What I'm trying to get at, though, is we, we're so used to looking at pictures where the viewpoint is fixed. The artist, like the cameraman, it stood still. We begin to think everything looks that way, don't we? But it's actually very unlike the way we see, because our lives are all about movement. We want movement. Now, if I walk round the chair and then think of what I saw, this seems to me would make it more real. Although it looks as though there's a central viewpoint, it, the perspective does look traditional. Not one photograph is taken from that central viewpoint. They're all taken from all over. And you're looking down on the road, you're looking up, you're looking every direction. Another key attribute of joiners is their ability to capture the passage of time. Hockney makes brilliant use of this attribute. So he takes pictures over a period of time and the action that's going on through the photos is all recorded. He sat with some friends who were working on a crossword puzzle together and he took photos of them as they were working through this together. Here he is describing it. I think probably the first picture was taken when she was almost ready to write the word and then as she got more excited thinking the word is correct and moves down starts with the top of her head and ends with the tip of the pen 
And I realized you could make think portraits uh, more and more complex, showing uh, different expressions on the face, using the passing of time. And it opened up uh, enormous possibilities. Oh my God, all right, she'd be so mad if I showed you this. But I took a joiner of my mom the other day trying to show the passage of time. And can you see it? Look, look at her hands. She's playing with her phone in one picture. Then she puts it down because she's trying to talk to me or something, trying to be polite. Uh, but then she picks it right back up again. So that is an example of the passage of time in a joiner. Ooh, okay. This is a good one. So the, one of the other nice attributes about these joiners is that you can show the different varieties of lighting, color, texture, different details in the picture that you can't always get with one single image. Have you ever taken a picture of someone and maybe they're standing kind of far back, but the problem is they have maybe an interesting design on their shirt or a something written on their shirt and you'd like to get that detail? Joiners can fix that. Why don't you take a look? I think I bet probably began with the stop sign, meaning I'm up a ladder, I'm photographing very close to it. Every photograph here is taken close to something, which is why you, the viewer, feel involved in it and feel close to it. That's what does it. You can see the cracks in the enamel. You are actually literally close to everything. You're moving around in it. But I mean, I was aware that cameras do push you away. I was trying to pull you in. Visual trickery. Since you're taking pictures in time, it gives you the opportunity to kind of mess around with the photo. Um, you see in that picture, I made it look like two arms were growing out of one or something. You can play around with it because of the passage of time. As you will now notice here, I moved the trees from up there. I could move things around. When I first did collages, I called it drawing with a camera. I felt that's what you were doing. Like in drawing, you make choices. We don't all see the same things. We don't all hear the same things either. That's what artists tell us, or that's what I keep trying to do anyway. Oh my God, I can totally just hear you in your head right now. You're thinking, these pictures just look like a panorama feature on my phone. You take a thing and then you move it across. I even can show that passage of time. Sometimes if you have somebody moving, they're in it a bunch of times. I already done this. It's different. I totally know what you're saying. It's similar, but you have more creative control with joiners than you can with that panorama app. But that's a very cool thing to have. Have you ever seen the 360 panorama? It takes a bunch of pictures from all different perspectives and like puts them together nicely for you. There's some great things, but I want you to learn specifically how to create your own joiner using different photos all together. So let's see how you do it. You know it took time to take them, wait for them, put them down and so on. I probably should have told you this earlier. David Hockney made all of his joiners before the age of smartphones. So he had to actually take the pictures with an old camera with the film and everything. He had to then get it developed or develop it himself. And then he had to use glue and scissors and all the things to put it all together. What a mess. I'm going to show you some techniques of how to do it with a smartphone. So I used an iPhone for this specifically, but you can really do it with any smartphone, absolutely. I call this the camera roll technique because if you notice, the pictures in your camera roll are already in a grid. When you start, make sure that you have a clean row to work with. And then you find your subject and click, move, click, move, click, move. Make sure you count how many rows across your camera roll does. As you saw, mine had three across, and I found, counted that it was five going down. So I'm going to count five rows of three. You'll get the hang of it eventually. All right, once you've got it in your camera roll, take a screenshot, crop it a little, and then you send it in. It's done. You know what? It's easy enough to just take a picture of one thing that's sitting still. I had my niece do a portrait of her dog. That's a little more complicated. The thing moved all around, but you know what? Passage of time. It's showing some kind of an interesting moment in this dog's weird little life. One more trick with the camera roll style is that if you have it in the photos section rather than the recent albums like I had, you can adjust how many go across in your camera roll, but it can get kind of complicated. Good luck with it, but 
Try it out. If you don't have a dog, you could obviously just take selfies. Cringy as these are, it could be interesting. It's kind of fun to show the passes of time by making some different facial expressions. But unfortunately in this one, I kind of messed up with the camera roll technique. Do you see that they're all in the wrong spot? So I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna find an app that does photo collages for me. I personally like to use the one called Layout, but there are so many free ones in the App Store or uh, the Google Play Store if those are available to you. So take a look at how I do it myself. Um, you can, I chose nine different photos, the ones that I had messed up the layout on in the camera roll. So now you can see the two on the top, they're kind of backwards, so I swapped them out. I'm gonna resize. This option's a little more fun because you really can customize it even more. If you wanna zoom in on things, switch the position of them, it's kind of nice. The last option is the most labor intensive, but could be kind of cool. And it might be necessary if you're only using a computer. So you would take all of the pictures that you're able to take and import them into Google Slides. What I had to do here is they all came in large. So I had to make them all smaller together. And then you just lay them out in the order that you had taken the picture. Again, you can do so many different things with it. You could change the colors of them. You could turn them around. You could change the sizes. I do recommend this as the kind of the best way of making your own joiners, but you use the technique that works best for you. All right, good luck.